All right, let's get on with the uh, headlines, one of my favorite parts of the show. I just returned to check in with the New York Times after a bit of a hiatus from that particular paper for reasons of my own. And guess what? <laughs> Nothing's changed. They're still fear-mongering, still misleading everyone. God forbid they'd report a positive and, might I add, joyful development. For example, as of this morning, there was zero reporting on the fact that a district judge in Brooklyn has ordered the Department of Homeland Security to post public notice by today that it's accepting new applications for DACA, which, if you're new to current events, enables undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children who have grown up here, also known as dreamers, to legally live and work in this country. This comes as yet another blow to the Trump administration's drawn-out effort to kill DACA, otherwise known as the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. Immigrants' rights groups are celebrating this victory, which adds to last summer's win in the U.S. Supreme Court when it was decided that Trump and his admin cannot end DACA, which has benefited, by the way, about 800,000 young undocumented immigrants who were brought here uh, by their parents and they're not able to get their legal documents on their own because they're young, et cetera. Anyway, according to advocates, this new order to fully restore the program could soon benefit hundreds of thousands of people across the country. So we've got humane treatment of a particular group that has returned to the United States. Humanity has returned. Uh, good news. So why isn't the New York Times reporting on it? As a media studies professor, I fully understand the if it bleeds, it leads mentality that for profit media in a capitalist economy used to sell their paper. They choose stories that appeal to our addiction to adrenaline because it sells papers. But at what cost? The country is falling into an emotional and spirit spiritual distress en masse. OK, I am a former and. Well, still psychotherapist. Working in the media, so I can responsibly say that the media has a responsibility to report on the fact that in some areas, the sun is starting to rise. Day is dawning. Some light is breaking through the darkness. We try to do that here at ACT TV while at the same time not getting on, you know, rose colored glasses. Reality is a mixed bag with some actual wins for the values of, you know, humane life affirming things and kindness. Can we stand it? I have a friend who's a comedian. She goes by the miserable liberal, <laughs> which I think is very funny. Steph Zamorano, she's on the Jimmy Dore show, um, which like it or not like it, that's, it's a great name because it speaks to, are we, are we as liberals, are we as progressives willing to focus on the things that are positive, that are happening? that are growing, keeping them growing by keeping the media focus on them? Or no, we're just going to let the New York Times march us all into insanity and depression. Anyway, in another win for humanity, a bonds company long accused of preying on undocumented immigrants will be severely restricted and pay a fine of $425,000. I'm sure that's not enough to cover the praying they've been doing on people. But still, this started in Virginia. Each year, thousands of people detained by ICE are granted bond, allowing them to go free while their case proceeds. Oh, yeah, this is the other girl. Right, right, right. We did that already. Sunrise. Oh, yeah, here's the one. Um, okay, so their cases proceed through ICE and they're granted bond, which lets them go free as their case goes through the immigration courts, which can take forevs. However, ICE requires bonds to be paid in full and by someone with legal status in the United States, which is where the shady company called Libra comes in. A 2017 investigation by the Washington Post found that some of Libra's clients were given documents in English, a language they didn't understand or speak, and just told to sign. And then they were startled because they got a GPS monitor the size of a cigarette package strapped to their legs, most said Libra employees threatened them with being returned to ICE custody if they didn't pay. Well, guess what? 
Libra's got a fine now. They've got some some strict laws they have to live under. And they're under investigation by at least nine other states or federal agencies, including the U.S. Justice Department, which if Bill Barr steps down anytime soon, even before January, that would be terrific. So that's something we want to keep our eyes on. In our last story, a call to action. United We Dream is working to bring justice for immigrants who, by the way, pay $90 billion in U.S. taxes each year and only get $5 billion uh, through social safety nets. Fun fact to fight your Trump or relatives with if you are brave enough to fight the pandemic, sit on an airplane and go see them at the holidays. Immigrants pay $90 billion in U.S. taxes each year and only get $5 billion through social safety nets. Anywho, and the right wants to get rid of them and still cut your taxes as if that's a possibility. Anyway, immigrants have been disproportionately impacted by the recession brought on by the coronavirus pandemic. According to newly released data, their job losses could significantly slow the United States' economic recovery. If hopefully we're in a recovery right now, it's hard to know. Immigrants are more likely than American-born workers to have jobs in the service industry, including hospitality and food service, health care, and in the food supply chain. With the onset of COVID-19, these industries have seen some of the most significant job cuts. The economic impact on these job losses is potentially more severe for immigrants because they can face restricted at access to public benefits of any kind. You can help support immigrants by signing petitions and getting involved with the actions happening at United We Dream. That's the news report for today. I'm Juliana Forlano. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Turn the bell on so you know when we're on. And stay tuned to our YouTube channel because we're going to have our interview with John Nichols up today. We're going to have our interview with Greg Palace up within the next day. Um, and if you're watching on Facebook, stick with us because we're doing that right now.